So first things first, Daniel, how are you? I'm good. Uh, freshly home from a very long, brutal tour, but, uh, you know, I'm, everything went well on the tour and I'm happy to be home. So all, we're all in good spirits here. After a couple of years that we've had, is it difficult now to complain about tour? It is. It is. <laughs> uh, it definitely, you know, going into COVID, we were over toured. You know, I sure. think we spent nine months of that year on the road. Uh, so when COVID happened, you know, uh, everyone was like, whatever, it, it'll come back. No big deal. Um, and we're tired of touring anyway. And then, you know, about a year and a half in, it's like, it's pretty serious. You know, if, if this goes on too much longer, you know, are any of the clubs still going to be open or are the bands still going to be together to, to play in them kind of thing? Um, but uh Coming back out, though, I got to say, I feel like everyone's energy level is like twice as high as it used to be. It, it's legit. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah, it's it's kind of separates the ones who do it for the passion from the ones who did it for a paycheck, I suppose, because now all of a sudden, OK, we get to do this again. And then you're, the hunger is back. The hunger is back. Yeah. Yeah. So it. You know, it was uh, it was interesting, like writing a record um, also just without having any rock shows happening. Mm. Like none of our friends are passing through town. You know, the when you go to a rock show, it's kind of this like alien environment that isn't a part of any sort of normal day. Um, and that's what we do. You know, we we make those environments and to like not be able to go and kind of sample what it is that you actually do is kind of difficult it was like riding in a vacuum sure. very quickly and this is a less i want to talk about that period but um what did you do yourself personally kind of during this time of, of isolation did you kind of delve into the base well what, what, what did you yeah uh i did it did a couple things um definitely uh definitely spent a lot of time uh with regards to music i got got really affluent with pick playing i was always okay. a finger style bass player okay um and finally just stepped up and learned how to shred with a pick. So uh, that's been a lot of fun. Um, the, the other work band thing I did, uh, I got way in over my head on a, a project. Uh, it's a, it, it's for the stage. It's basically, it's a pneumatic kinetic sculpture. It stands okay. about 24 feet tall. It's made of uh, six six aluminum kick drums that I built. Each drum okay. has pistons in it, so it can move about 30 degrees uh, forward, back, left, right from the drum next to it. So there's two arms of these drums that are able to kind of spin and dance and play itself kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So I learned, uh, I I was already into metal fabrication. I built Drumtron and Scorpion Tail and that stuff. Mm. Um, you know, I, I'm just a hobbyist level fabricator. Um but then I got the idea for this this robot, and it really uh, had to learn a lot of things. Had to learn had to fabricate out of aluminum. Uh, had to learn coding because it's okay. automated. It's it's MIDI programmed. Um, and then uh, taught myself computer automated design, CAD okay. design, to communicate with other people. Um, sure. But uh, anyway, that's almost finished. I wasn't able to finish it before the touring started, um, but. It'll it'll be there. Uh, the other thing I got into was uh, bicycle wheelies. Okay. I don't know. Don't know why. Was, th that was the actual thing that it's like, if, if everyone's learning something, you know, I'm going to come away with something too. So. But yeah, it sounds like you did quite a lot. Uh, you learned quite a lot in those years. And uh, hopefully we get to see that machine uh, once it's done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, there's plans for it to hit the road. It's a, uh, it's a bit of a nightmare as far as uh, it destroys the backstage, you know, because it need, <laughs> needs sure. a couple air compressors. And uh, so it it's kind of a good thing it wasn't ready right away. Um, but come next year, now that the album's out and, you know, the headline tours will start pouring in, uh, it'll should be good to go for that. So, Right. Well, getting to the album then, uh, Spirits, well, I read that the initial kind of work on it already began around 2019. And then obviously we had those, those couple of years. Were there any ideas from that early period that ended up on the album or did you kind of, as a band, scrap the whole thing because you've ha had so much time to work on it that, and, and start over? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the early ideas made it. I think the okay. very first song, uh, 
I remember the very first song we started working on together uh, here and Mark, Mark was just pl- kind of playing something on guitar and it kind of reminded me of the 28 days later melody mm-hmm. that, that uh, movie, the soundtrack from that sure. movie. Um, and yeah, that song became dream with me. So, so the very, yeah, the very first song we worked on together made the record there. There were, there were probably five completed r- songs that didn't. Um, but uh yeah for for the most part we're we're getting a little better at uh not having so many scrap pieces at the end of the day trying to you know just write things right the first time but yeah does it does that come with kind of the this is album now i have to count one two three four five this is album number six uh i believe so uh does that just come with experience or is that something you kind of really have to focus in on yeah, it, it it comes with experience for sure. Like you, you just know quicker what isn't cool or like what isn't mm-hmm. you, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, just experience is always good. We learn to work together better, and you know, after, we've we've chased thousands of dead ideas now. So <laughs> there, there's always a, a little something to learn from each one, but. It's hard though. Creativity is hard because you you never know where the good stuff is. Like the good stuff is always in the unexpected places, you know, which is where you haven't gone before. Uh, so it, you can't, you know, if you're if you're building a house or or a car or something like that, you can streamline things and really think about it pragmatically. Um, songwriting a lot of times, it's it's hard. You just the the gold sometimes does lie at the end of really like struggling with something and but then sometimes it doesn't like hard work doesn't always pay off and you know that that's why I, experience is so golden in it because you just kind of know yourself and kind of kind of get a feeling for the situation and you know sometimes weird ideas hit you real hard and that's that's when you pursue something strange and into the unknown but, can you give me an example of one of those songs that that perhaps was initially difficult to make then you you got away from it a little bit then maybe returned to it and then you're now glad that it ended up on the album yeah uh like I'm trying to think the first one that popped into my head it's not on this record it's christ <laughs> christ copy right because that song started uh actually from johnny took the guitar part from gone and created this very weird he reversed it uh and create a very bizarre loop. It was just like, what? To get with all these like tiny little fast drums. And we played around with that forever, just trying to see if it could spark something. And and Christ Copyright did end up coming from that. Um, but uh I'm trying to think other songs that we've like struggled, like Mr. MTV was definitely a song that we struggled and struggled and struggled okay. with. Um and you know, through if you were to actually like look at a tempo map of that song, like you could probably kind of better see how that there's some random the random part construction, you know, because there's like ten and fifteen BPM jumps in between sections and things like that. But it happens that way sometimes. <laughs> yeah, like you mentioned, creativity is sometimes very difficult to predict, especially if you have four people who all kind of have their own influences as well. So when yeah. it comes to kind of making those decisions, and and this comes with experience, I'm guessing as well. But but what goes into making those decisions? Is it do you all four have to be on the same page with the song, or or can you kind of be convinced uh, after? A yeah. While? Oh yeah. No, we're uh, we're democratic. So um, there there's four of us, unfortunately. So we have our managers, <laughs> kind of the deciding vote in a lot of things whenever we're in stalemates. But um, it makes it way harder, like sharing everything like that. Like it mm-hmm. does. It, it at least has to, it, whatever you're hearing at least passes like a three quarter vote with all of us, you know? Sure. And if somebody, if somebody absolutely puts their foot down on something, like we do respect that, you know, if it's a subject matter lyrically, or I don't know, if someone just drags their heels and for all out hates a song, like, I don't know, we, we go with it. it we just don't ever, that rarely ever happens, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, we we fight a lot. A lot of being in a band is just learning how to fight better, and uh, we've gotten pretty good. 
Well, but you raise an interesting point because especially with when it comes to things like lyrics, which can be quite personal to Johnny, uh, but but obviously you all have emotions as well and you all have, have certain ideas about the world. So so how do you kind of balance what, what your own thoughts are with what Johnny is writing? Yeah, um, so lyrics, uh, the lyrics are the one thing that uh, it's just me, Mark and Johnny. Ben, we don't, uh, since Ben was newer, that was something that, we didn't want we didn't know how the dynamic would change so we just left it the same but sure. yeah that, that that's hard because like me and mark are 100 percent interested and invested in the lyrics you know and we run across things all the time where johnny's just like i wouldn't say that you know or <laughs> you know i really wouldn't this isn't like that dear to me you know and it 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 it, it it's something we have to fight about sometimes you know because Johnny is the vocalist and sure. the natural exception is that like what he is like all the lyrics are his or, or, or they, they are all his in a way. Cause that's, that's why we all have to agree kind of thing. But um, yeah, it creates, creates a lot of complications, but I do think at the end of the day, it makes a better, it makes for better songs though. Cause it, you know how many how many bands have you listened to and you read through the lyrics and it's like this is just nonsense it's like sh <laughs> it's like obviously nobody else cares <laughs> yeah no no, no I've, i think yeah. I've, I've i've talked uh talked with johnny about this before about the influences of people like uh, alan watson and carl jung and that there is a mm -hmm. def substantiveness to to the lyrics and kind of the ideas put forth in the song. So with that in mind, then, is there one song that particularly is close to, to your heart or, and can be both musically or, or lyrically? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I know this is the time probably, uh, I know that's like our, probably our biggest song, but um, I don't know when we we're writing it, that was just definitely a song that I felt like, I, I personally connected to in a lot of ways and also have just like felt a lot of people connect to. And um, that song too, like started kind of completely different. It started real down and it always, it always had that chorus, but it was a lot slower. And that was one of those songs that, you know, we just, it's like, let's, let's make, let's, the, the riff was the same in the verse, but it was, it wasn't distorted and it was real slow. And we just amped it up, turned it up to 11. And that song like came alive. Uh, and that was the first time I felt like as a songwriter, I really saw that happen. And then, you know, the label picked that up as the first single. And while we were writing it, it was like, surely this is, this would never be a single. It's like too heavy, too complicated. But um, yeah, I don't know. That song just, it's, it's special to me for a lot of reasons. Okay. Well, you meant to mention the heavy nature of the uh some songs or that songs can have and now spe specifically with spirits because you mentioned earlier on that uh this was the first time making a record while not touring while not being in that kind of mindset of playing live so did that affect the sonic landscape at all because it is still quite a heavy record it feels yeah, like it yeah. will do well live yeah yeah um i don't I don't know if it affected, I don't know how much it affected the sonic landscape. Um, I think it affected it for me as a bass player because uh, a lot of times going to shows, like the bass is always the hardest thing to hear. Um, and what that always makes me tend to do as a player is to play more simply, you know, whereas this record, I kind of went the other direction, especially with effects. I really, uh, me and Mark really, it was kind of funny. We, Mark engineered all the bass and produced the bass with me, I guess you'd say. Um, we did it at his house and every, every day we're drinking coffee at the beginning. And it's like, it's like, are we going to, what are we going to do on this song? You know, are we going to do the normal metal bass thing or are we going to push it some, you know? And, and every song, I think like, I follow where I need to follow for sure. And, and am the foundation, but I, I'm really stoked about all like the soundscapes we're able to get with the bass guitar. And, there's a lot of cool, uh, a lot of cool moments like the top of uh, when the band comes in and you don't know what love means. There's like this sounds like a 747 is taking off like <laughs> like that's all one bass guitar. OK, just, yeah, which is crazy. Just uh, so I, I really kind of went into the effects world a lot more uh, 
we upgraded, we switched to Axe Effects a number of years ago, and we've been just so happy with them. And the newest ones are even more powerful. And uh, yeah, so with added time off the road, it was cool to really unlock the power of that box. So yeah, and I, I imagine that will kind of create a bigger palette for you to work with in the future as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, and whenever effects are neat, because whenever you're in a creative block, sometimes you just throw on a different delay and it it just tickles your brain in this other way. And it's like, oh, wow. I, or you hear it differently and True. causes you to play it differently. And it's like, I would have never just thought of that. So, uh, a lot of, you know, being creative is one thing and there's things you can do to work on your creativity, but there's also like cool external tricks, you know? Like one time I flipped my bass guitar upside down just for fun <laughs> and played like a, one of my normal go-to riffs. And the way that it sounded was just so bizarre, but it, it like kind of sparked some other things. It's like, oh, that just a, if you're sick of what you're doing, just flip the instrument upside down and see what comes out. It might might move you somewhere. <laughs> but it, it, you you kind of allude to something. And I I always find it interesting because I I feel there are two camps within kind of the music industry in terms of songwriting and and kind of honing their craft. One is you you just approach it as a nine to five. You do it every day. You kind of hammer at it. And then there's mm -hmm. some, the other half is kind of just sitting waiting for divine inspiration and to to kind of get that <laughs> that uh, yeah hand of God almost touching their skulls. So um, where do, does the ball uh, band fall in uh, the, the it, do you approach it as a craft or is it something that you also kind of need to be in the, mood, the right mood for? Yeah, it, it, uh, it's totally both for us, for sure. Okay. Um, you know, I remember reading, I read an article by this very famous New York times, uh, cartoonist. They always have like really creative cartoons on there. And, uh, yeah, his big thing was just showing up to work, you know, and that's like, that, that's just such a huge aspect of it, I guess, is, is making yourself available. You might not be able to do anything, you know, like we might show up in the jam room and nothing happens that day. But it, but if we didn't show up at all because we didn't feel inspired, then nothing would have happened anyway, chances are. Uh, so I, I think, yeah, I think like the job aspect of it is just we we force ourselves to be more frustrated longer, <laughs> <laughs> waiting waiting for the Lord to show up. But, or but the uh, aliens, whatever yeah, you believe. Ho hopefully, then the payoff is even better, right? Because you had to struggle for it. Yeah, yeah, totally. It totally. It, 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 you never know when it's going to hit. It's hard. Final question, then, because because well, one part of uh, not being able to play live for a while is you kind of uh, this this connection with the audience is broke uh, broken or severed for a while because well you do see numbers on the screen or people on the screen but it's it's not the same as looking people in the eye and seeing them right in front of you so having been able to experience that again what was what did that mean for you personally oh man uh just the like the power of human contact is massive like and the power of just the the influence we have over each other like smiling you know it, just someone walking in a room there's a feeling you have from them like you walking in a room and someone's in there there's a feeling like if they're real depressed like they'll suck the energy out of you or, or they'll or they'll give it back you know um and i think like musically the the coolest thing i saw the last couple months was uh just the, the power like the energy that music creates in people you know, like there's obviously the concerts, uh, but like one one night I was backstage and we were in this arena and it was a, what we call a roadie Friday, which mm -hmm. means there's no show the next day. Um, so those are nights typically that people typically party. But anyway, there's just nothing happening backstage and it's probably like 10, 30, 11, you know, everything's winding down or no, it's probably like 11, 30 midnight. All the bands are done. Um, and then my bluetooth speaker and put on uh uh a darkness a uh, little thing called love what is it uh, anyway uh <laughs> sudden, like six people walk in the room like whiskey bottles in hand just like yeah like I don't know, like something had happened but nothing had happened there was just like i just put a song on and it and it ignited this like desire in everyone to talk to each other and to be loud and rambunctious and to, you know, be encouraging and 
and celebrate. It's it's wild. And to think to think about like like music, obviously in the pandemic, like music did what it did for me uh, every day when I listened to it. But I hadn't it had just been so long since I witnessed like what it does to communities of people and how much it like connects and brings everyone together and, and inspires and you know it can just change your day in a second and that's fucking incredible <laughs> there's nothing like that it's, it's kind of crazy right because it's it's, it's almost like a drug like, like you said and I, I noticed it with myself if i'm in a bad mood and there's a certain song that i love uh that pops onto my uh, headphones then it's all of a sudden i'm in a better mood so it's it's almost like a drug in a way where uh, but you don't th there's no downside i suppose yeah no side effects like only ever produces good things it seems like you know it and i feel the the connection with it's so magical it's like even if you get the lyrics wrong and you like change your life on those lyrics it's still like is it's never a bad thing you know right. like i don't know there's something magical about that so with those words uh daniel thank you so much for taking the time to talk <laughs> with me i wish you yeah. uh, so the the tour is done now you have some time off yeah yeah we got a couple months off uh and then we have ship rocked and then things start up again in april for us so we're hoping there's talks of getting uh back over to europe in the summer that's okay. it's looking concrete i don't there hasn't been a tour announced like around the summer fest or anything but we're we're doing our best so well, we're always happy to have you over here so um well thanks again and uh hope you have a great day yeah you too take it easy man